everybody. How are you doing today? I am doing pretty well. Filming here Friday night, just after work. Getting ready for a Friday night stitch-in. Hope you are all as well. Well, actually, it's already past Friday night stitch-in. So I hope you had a wonderful Friday night stitch-in. I am going to try to um, stitch as much as I can tonight uh, because I have not been stitching much. I actually have not stitched in over a week. It's probably been a week and a half since I've stitched any. Well, it's been a week and a couple days, so over a week since I've put any stitches in. So this is the first time I've stitched um, in quite a while. I have been doing some knitting. But I haven't really been, like I've been talking about in my update videos, I have not really been motivated uh, to do much stitching. So, but that's all right because we always have those highs and lows. I need to adjust the lighting a little bit. I'm trying to get, that might have to do. Um, I know the lighting is, so let me, um, let me get back to my thought and then we'll talk about the lighting. Um, you know, I've been talking about how we have highs and lows in a lot of my videos recently just because of motivation. Just because, uh, you know, I'm in one of those periods where I have not really been in, in the creative mind frame to, to do my stitching. But it is slowly starting to come back, so that's good. Um, as far as the lighting is concerned, maybe that will help a little bit. Yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure. I'm hoping that will help a little bit. Let's see. I am stitching here late afternoon so I have to have all of my blinds shut because it is super warm out super super sunny super hot one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and so in order to keep the heat out of the apartment and to keep the air from running so much I have to have the blind shut but then that doesn't help with natural light, so then I have to have my alt light on, which whenever you film then throws off the lighting a little bit. So the the alt light is directly above me, so I can have some lighting to see. Uh, and of course, I'm I'm stitching on this pale fabric, um, X Ju Designs Rocky Mountain 46 count. So it's, you know, it's just the, the lighting is not the greatest quality today for this video, but it's going to have to do. I know most of you are doing your crafting anyways and are looking at your stuff and merely just listening anyways. So, but, you know, it is what it is. So as you can see, I am working on... My by the bay piece. I have not stitched on this since my update video, like I've just mentioned. So I'm trying to get this uh, cl the clouds on this side done, and then I'm going to put it away for a while because I need to work on a design piece over the weekend. So I need to get the model stitched up so that I can have it ready to go for a release next week. So that is the plan for this weekend stitching. And then hopefully by Monday, I can, I'm can. i planning to pull out Henry is the plan. Now, of course, plans are always subject to change around here because motivation lately is playing a big factor. But that's all right. Because we're going to go with it and we're going to enjoy what we do. So. 
this week, along with my video gaming that I've been doing on my computer, I've really been trying to exercise more whenever the weather is appropriate just to get out and be active in the sun and the warm weather while we have it because you know they're already starting to talk fall and I've seen so many people on Instagram and Facebook saying about can't wait for fall and it's making me sick so I'm trying to enjoy the the lovely warm weather while we have it because I am not looking forward to winter I am a summer person all the way even if it's super super hot like it is today I would much rather be out in the heat than have freezing cold temperatures so again I'm trying to really be more active so I've been doing a lot more with my Fitbit I've been trying to get my 250 steps every hour when I'm at work and I've been trying to trying this week to get my 10,000 steps in every day so far this week I've got I've been successful three out of four days so I have about I think 3,000 more steps to go for the day so after I'm done filming this I will probably go out and get those last few steps in for the day just so I can feel confident and feel comfortable with my 10,000 steps. So again, I'm stitching the By the Bay 13th Colony, Part 1. This is, again, on 46 count linen, 1 over 2, meaning that I'm using one strand of DMC floss, over two strands or two pieces of the linen. So each X spans the length of two of the the warp and weft of the linen. I know that is not a very good explanation of the what 1 over 2 means but just to give a rough idea for those of you that are asking um, because I know I've had some people asking for some general explanations so I do plan on giving some more in-depth um, lessons on that in the future Two, three, four, with diagrams which I know will be helpful and I know there's many others out there that have already done so and I think Caroline did recently on one of her Stitch With Me videos which is very helpful Of course, my preferred stitching is with one strand. Uh, I do not, I, I prefer using one strand just because you don't have to worry about the way two strands of a floss lay. And it just makes my stitching look a lot better. And I like the ec economical values of using one strand. You know, a, a skein of floss goes a lot farther.
So I thought I would answer some more of your Facebook questions that you provided me last a few weeks ago during um, along with that I began answering on my last stitch with me a couple weeks ago. So in the last few minutes here of my stitch with me I figured I would answer some of those questions while we stitch along here. Let me pull those up. So question, the first question today is, if you could write a letter to 18 year old you, what advice would you give him? And this is from Charlene Petrosky. Charlene, I don't think I would give any advice. And the reason I say that is because I have experienced so much in my life so far and if I were to give advice, I don't know if, you know, I would have gotten to have the same experiences that I've had in my life to date or to be where I am today. You know, and I've always viewed that everything happens for a reason. One, two, three, four, five. And so for me, you know, yes, there's been a lot of wonderful things and there's been a lot of not so great things. But along with those not so great things have come some really amazing experiences such as, you know, living a year in South Korea and getting to visit Hong Kong and driving truck across country for three years while that was not the most enjoyable job I got to experience you know driving across the country for three years so I don't know if you know pro to me providing it's always like that age-old um, sci-fi you know, like time traveling thing where you can't interact with your former self because then you, you, you're going to change the past. Um, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I don't know if I'd want to give any advice because I don't know if I would want to change anything. And I know you're getting a lot of my head today, and I don't really know why, because I have you guys set up the same as I normally do, but I guess I have, the, I don't know. I don't know if I have the camera set up differently. Let me adjust this a bit up. So I have to look up instead, and that might help. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. Okay, next question from Emily Weber. Family food traditions, especially those passed down generations. Okay, um, I don't know if we've really had a lot of family food traditions. I, yeah, I, other than, you know, for some reason it seems like in my immediate family a tradition is having mashed potatoes and noodles in the same meal. And what you do is you put the noodles on top of the mashed potatoes. 
And I was taught that that is a German tradition, but I've been told by other Germans that that is not a German tradition. So maybe it is a German, uh, a certain part of Germany tradition or a, a Dutch German tradition. I don't know, a, you know, Pennsylvania Dutch, I don't know. But, um, so I, th that is the only food tradition I can think of is noodles, like, and, and I'm talking noodles being like egg noodles, you know, like the, the, the flat egg noodles that you boil in the chicken or the turkey broth. And then, you know, mashed potatoes, and then you put the noodles on top of the mashed potatoes. And feel free to add butter if you so choose. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Okay. Yep, you're still getting a lot of my head. Don't know why. Let me adjust myself here. I mean, not that you can really... I mean, it, the stitches are so small that it's hard to see anyways. Okay. Um, Laura Hafner asks me to talk about myself. I think I'm doing a pretty good job doing that now. So, and I do the, a lot of that in my videos anyways. Um, Sally asks me, she says she loves hearing about my work. Well, I do that as much as I can, but there's a lot of things I can't talk about work just because of HIPAA and the education laws surrounding confidentiality. So, um, Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch asks, did you do all you wanted on your summer vacation? Okay, so let, that is a loaded question. Okay, summer, what am I doing? I'm not paying attention. That's what I'm doing. Okay, summer vacation for me is broken between June and August. In June, I typically get two weeks off. And then in August, I typically get a week, week and a half off. This year, we only had one week off in June because of snow days. And then I get nine days off here in August. So today is, I just ended my last day of school for summer. And we get to start um, our, our August break. So we get nine days off now. So have I gotten to do everything I've wanted to do for my summer break? For the most part, yes. Um, I didn't really have any plans for my summer breaks. Typically, I don't have any plans because all of my friends have to work. And I don't usually go anywhere on vacation in the summer. If I do vacations, they're usually in the fall when it's less, um, less crowded. I'm not a fan of crowds. So I would rather go on a vacation in the fall when it's slightly cooler temperatures and um, a lot less crowded people anywhere I go. I don't have any tra any travel plans this year, but as far as did I get any everything done for this, my summer breaks, yes. I guess so, because I didn't really have anything planned.
Trisha asks, would you consider doing a custom diamond painting with a hay pattern for a heaven and earth design pattern? Uh, for example, Henry. I no. I don't I have no interest in doing a custom diamond painting, especially a heaven and earth design. Um there are not a whole bunch of heaven and earth designs that I'm really into. I have a handful that I am interested in for maybe stitching. But overall, there's only a handful that I'm even interested in for stitching. So, and I, the jury for me is still out as far as interest totally into diamond painting. So, would I do a custom diamond painting? Absolutely not, because I don't. I just don't know if, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I like diamond painting for the, the change in pace of crafting, but I'm not going to go to the extreme of making customs and everything just because I'm not that into it. I mean, it's going to take me a while to do the ones that I have. Fingers must be sticky today. Okay. So the last question I'm going to answer on today's video is from Mary Beth, and she asks the pros and cons of being a twin. Um, that is a loaded question. As so far as, you know, I, I think my experience of being a twin is very different than I think a lot of people experience being a twin. For me, being an identical twin, you know, of course, it's always cool just being a twin because it's it's unusual and you're the you're a minority. But for me, it was also a struggle of identity, you know, because I it was. A lot of people are afraid to guess, you know, they don't want to offend you by calling you the wrong name 
or guessing your name, you know, guessing your name incorrectly or calling you the wrong brother. And so they just wouldn't. And and so you're grouped together instead of having your own identity. Or at least that is what I experienced. as a twin. So I don't, and you know, of course, I don't know many other sets of twins. So for me, I don't know if it, I haven't really ever gotten to talk to other twins much to know if they've had similar situations or different situations because, you know, typically what you hear is, you know, twins love being twins and you know, they would play jokes on people. My brother and I never did that. We just never, you know, that wasn't our thing. And I also don't really have any other understanding of what it's like to be anything but a twin because I don't have any other siblings. All I have is my twin. So I can't compare being a twin to being anything else because being a twin is all I know. So that is a hard question for me to really answer because of my unique experiences with what life has dealt me. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying, you know, the cards that have been dealt to me are unique in a way that I don't have a varied amount of experiences to base my determinations on. But it's a very good question. So I want to thank you all for the questions for today's video. I still have more questions that I will answer as the videos go on. Um, I'm slowly getting back into my stitching, so that is exciting. I'm actually sitting here and I'm really starting to enjoy this again. Not that I don't enjoy it ever, but you know, I'm just I'm starting to feel the motivation again. So that is good. Um, I hope you are all having a wonderful weekend and you are staying cool if you are in a heat wave like I am. <laughs> Excuse me. And I hope you all have a wonderful stitching time and I will see you in the next video. And don't forget to always be creative.